Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! Uh, again, we've, we've got the amazing backdrop, uh, which is by Juan Acho. You should check out his website. He's a fantastic artist. Uh, I am excited because today we have a man on with a name uh, that I happen to love because his name is also Tom. Tom McGrenry, how are you doing, Tom? I am very well, thank you. It's very nice to meet you, Dr. Tom. Oh, it's nice to meet you, too. Now, you are, like, way across the other side of the world in um, Hong Kong, right? That's right. That's almost the exact... Well, actually, where, where are you? Oh, well, I'm in parts unknown, also known as Florida, because that's where um, lots of swamps where frogs like to go are. That's, that's cool. Yeah, we have many swamps and frogs in this, this area as well, so you'd like it here, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I may have some relatives uh, over there in Hong Kong, but we don't speak much. Oh, shame. It's, it's the time zones. Hey, so I understand that you have a, have a game called Ued, You're the Resistance? It's something like that, yeah. Um, originally, it was called UED uh, when it was in Portuguese, but now it's in English. It's called UED, You Are the Resistance. And, well, hold uh, on a second now. UED, those letters don't spell You Are the Resistance. I'm a little confused, no. Tom. That's right. They don't. They spell United Earth Defense. And uh, you, when you play the game, are in that group uh, who are a bunch of uh, messengers and explorers who uh, they, you live in these underground bunkers in a far future post-apocalyptic world, and you've got to go out and look for supplies and, and carry messages for people, all the while dodging the aliens who now run planet Earth. Oh, okay. So is this yeah. kind of a, um, a Dianetics thing then, because the aliens have taken over like Battleship Earth? Is that how it goes? I have not seen that film, but it might be. I don't know. But anyway, there's, yeah, there's aliens, big robot things that you have to avoid or maybe fight if you can pull it off. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, so you said that you're like messengers, is that right? So how, how does the game play? Do you, do you have a unit or is it like a solo game or how's that go? Uh, you, uh, well, it's a pretty standard tr traditional GM and, and player setup. I think it expects at least three, three to five people in a, a team of maybe soldiers and mechanics and guys who are good with uh, repairing stuff and driving cars, whatever. And yeah, so your message is because for some reason, maybe to do with the aliens, radios and things like that don't work anymore. So you've got to go out into the uh, now frozen icy wastelands of planet Earth uh, in your armored and heated exploration suits. And uh, yeah, you've got to help, help out all the different havens by bringing them supplies or just uh, telling them about alien activity in the area, this kind of thing. Oh, man, that sounds pretty fun. So it's an apocalypse game, so use the power by the apocalypse rules, right? Uh, no, no, far from it. It's uh, a thing called, they call it Lost Dice, which is, um, actually, let me, let me briefly uh, show you a character sheet. This is one of the things that made me want to uh, translate this game from Portuguese, because if you, can you see this? There we oh. go. That is not only your character sheet, this is one of the pre-generated ones from the back of the book. It's also the head-up display in your character's uh, armored suit, so you're seeing what your character sees. And uh, the attributes there are, this guy's just got D4s and D6s, he's not very attribute-y. Uh, but uh, the way the game talks about it is it says you've got a, a reserve of dice. So like, if you had maybe uh, 10 D6s in your, your energy attribute, you could imagine having the dice actually on the table, and then each time you've got to roll the attribute, you pick one up, and you roll it, and then you put it away, because until you get to where you're going, you can't resupply, and you can't use that, that die again. And so the whole thing is like this. Uh, you know, you start off the mission, everything's pretty cool, you're well stocked up, everything's looking good, but as time goes by, those dice start to disappear, and you start to run out of resources until you get, things can get pretty, um, I was going to say dicey, but that's probably not what I... <laughs> I, I like that, though. You can say dicey. Go oh, ahead, Tom. Okay. I'm dicey. Nice. I would imagine in that game, if I were playing, I, my, most of the time I would just say, no, 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 you go. No, no, you go. I only have, no, you go. Is that how it goes? I, uh, there's, I think there's an element of that, yeah. But you've, um, after a while, you know, 
if everyone else in your team runs out of resources, you're, you're going to be pretty stuck yourself. So uh, it's all about teamwork and, and uh, pulling off heroic deeds. And um, the advantage of, of being heroic is when you get back home, it really cheers up everyone and you can improve you know, your haven's morale. And that like, gets everyone working better and they'll, have more, they'll grow more food for everyone to eat. They'll work harder on uh, recovering the lost technology of the old days. And uh, everything will be, will be better if you can come through and, and be a hero. Or, oh. or you might die. I mean, those. Oh, wow, wow. If you, if you, if you, is it hard to make a new character? Uh, not, nah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's pretty easy, which is probably a good thing. There's a f reasonably high fatality rate, I would say. Ah. Now, mm. I, you mentioned something about making your, your haven or your headquarters better. Is, is that like mechanically? Like, can you actually level up your base? Yes, you can. Yeah, there's uh, kind of downtime moves where you, you can level yourself up. You, you have little, uh, as a special ability list for each profession you can choose. And then you can also spend your points on improving life uh, in the Haven. Yeah. Oh, wait. Does that lead to the uncomfortable conversation where you say, um, I know that you really need a better medical facility, but I totally need to be better as a sniper. So sorry. It absolutely leads to that kind of conversation. Yes. So, um, that's, a, that's a thing you have to decide. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, mm, that's kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah. So, so you said that you, you translate it, so you speak Portuguese. How many languages do you speak? Like, I, I read somewhere that you speak, like, 1,400? Uh, I think it's it's in that realm, or it might be more like four, but, yeah. It, okay. It, it's, it, it's a few, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. What about um, Klingon? Can you speak Klingon? Uh, no, no. Unfortunately, I wanted to take it at, at university, but it, it clashed with, uh, with my literature classes, so, yeah. Man, why would they overlap with literature? Because there's lots of Klingon. What about uh, Orc? Can you speak Orokai? Uh, no. Well, I, you know, like holiday, holiday Orokai. I can get a taxi to go to a dark tower, but that's about it. That is the best. I am so excited that you could do that. That uh, my production assistant, uh, Monkey uh, Rogers, he's really big into Orc, so he's he's thrilled over here. <laughs> So when you translate it, I'm curious though, was were there just like turns of phrase that you had to, to what did you mostly ask them about? Like, hey, I don't get this thing. What's the thing do with the there thing? Were, yeah, there were a couple of those where, uh, you know, like, yeah, there, there's an allusion to something that maybe you don't get uh, or just like, especially when it's in a science fiction setting. So they're using, you know, using common words to mean something slightly different. So a couple of times like that. But game mechanics, they sound more or less the same in, in both languages, and uh, there's actually there's actually a lot of English in the original version as well because everybody's listening to all this uh, American and British pop music from the old days uh, on the you know while they're m mooching around in their survival suits. Uh, so oh, that, that was easy. Are there song lists? Uh, there are. Each chapter has a, a song in its heading, and uh, when you, oh yeah, I forgot about that. When you make a character. You have to choose a song that represents you, because uh, if you get lost in the in the snow or whatever, your suit will start to play that song through your your loudspeakers so that your friends can come find you. So, um, man, that's awesome! I really like that. <laughs> now, how can somebody who's interested in this? How can they pick up Ued? You're the resistance. <laughs> well, uh, you can go to RPG now or drive through RPG and search for said letters or look for. Porcupine Publishing, which is the company I am, and uh, that will get you the English one. And if you want the Portuguese version, that is still available, I think, at Redbox, uh, which is the kind of Brazilian RPG now. Cool. Okay. And you can get that in, uh, in, in just PDF or? Uh, yeah, uh, PDF. And by the time this episode goes out, um, it will be available in print on demand as well. So. Uh, that will be happening, yeah. All right, fantastic. Okay, enough talking about this uh, resisting the snow and the aliens. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a serious question for you. Are you ready for a serious question? Um, hold on. <sighs> okay. All right. Now, uh, this, you, as, you, as you, we both know, you speak uh, five different languages. So keeping that in mind, what is your favorite late night snack? Oh, um, hmm. I would have to say, 
Uh, oh, this, that's, that's tough. That's really tough. I think it might just be, it might just be biscuits. Any kind of biscuits. Oh, really? Now, when we say biscuits, you mean actual biscuits? There's not a British biscuits that taste different from American biscuits, right? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't mean those like weird scone things that you guys call biscuits. I mean like, uh, yeah, I say shortbread or, or cookies, I believe you might, you might say. Oh, cookies. That's a good call. Now, are there any crazy Hong Kong cookies? Uh, yeah, not really, no. <laughs> no. Oh, man, it's not like Japan where they would have like squid flavor or shrimp flavor cookies. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we, we import all those crazy Japanese uh, snacks, but we, I don't think there's any real, uh, not, not in the kind of the cookie category. There's loads of uh, amazingly strange to uh, foreign eyes Hong Kong snacks, though, but it's, uh, it, would, it would take too long to go through them all now. Thank you so much for coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog show. It was super great having you. Oh, thank you very much for, for inviting me on. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo But if it was a big waste of your time Well, it's free, so that's not a crime But if it was a waste of your time Yes, it's free, so that's not a crime <laughs>